Hey, good morning, brothers and sisters. It's Brother Anthony. And today is October 29th. It is 5.02 a.m. And we're going to jump into Joshua chapter 4. And I know these are not no elaborate videos. But it is necessary for us to learn about Joshua. Even I myself. Um, Joshua chapter 4 is they're still crossing the Jordan. Um, the Jordan River. And it's important for us to have something to remember our God. To honor our God with. You know, and this is what the book is for. This is what building our lives in Christ is for. So that we can have something to show others of what our God is like. You know. So, I'm going to read from the New King James Version. And then read some commentary that I have. And hopefully you guys will have a better understanding. Joshua chapter 4, verse 1. The memorial stones. And it came to pass, when all the people had completely crossed over the Jordan, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, saying, Take for yourselves twelve men from the people, one from every tribe, and command, me, and command them, saying, Take for yourselves twelve stones from here, out of the midst of the Jordan, from the place where the priests' feet stood firm. You shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place where you lodge tonight. Then Joshua called the twelve men, whom he had appointed from the children of Israel, one man from every tribe. And Joshua said to them, Cross over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan, and each of you take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. That this may be a sign among you when your children ask in time to come, saying, What do these stones mean to you? Then you shall answer them, That the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, when it crossed over the Jordan. The waters of the Jordan were cut off. And these stones shall be for a memorial to the children of Israel forever. And the children of Israel did so, just as Joshua commanded, and took up twelve stones from the midst of the Jordan. As the Lord had spoken to Joshua, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, and carried them over with them to the place where they lodged, and laid them down there. Then Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of the Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant stood, and they are there to this day. So the priest who bore the Ark stood in the midst of the Jordan until everything was finished, so that the Lord had commanded Joshua to speak to the people according to all that Moses had commanded Joshua. And the people hurried and crossed over. Then it came to pass... When all the people had completely crossed over, that the ark of the Lord and the priests crossed over in the presence of the people, and the men of Reuben, the men of Gad, the half tribe of Manasseh, crossed over, armed before the children of Israel, as Moses had spoken to them. About 40,000 prepared for war crossed over before the Lord for battle to the plains of Jericho. On that day the Lord exalted Joshua in the sight of all Israel, and they feared him as they had feared Moses all the days of his life. Then the Lord spoke to Joshua, saying, Command the priests who bear the ark of the testimony to come up from the Jordan. Joshua therefore commanded the priests, saying, Come up from the Jordan. And it came to pass when the priests who bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord had come from the midst of the Jordan, and the soles of the priest's feet touched the dry land. 
that the waters of the Jordan returned to their place and overflowed all its banks as before. Now the people came up from the Jordan on the tenth day of the first month, and they camped in Gilgal on the east border of Jericho. And these twelve stones which they took out of the Jordan, Joshua set up in Gilgal, that he spoke to the children of Israel, saying, When your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What are these stones? Then you shall let your children know, saying, Israel crossed over this Jordan on dry land. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan before you until you had crossed over. As the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up before us until we had crossed over, that all the people of the earth may know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever. Who is a mouthful? But hey, I'm going to look real quick here. Joshua chapter 4. It's pretty much self-explanatory, but I'm going to go ahead and read it from the Living Bible. All right, Joshua 4.1. It's very cold in here. When all the people were safely across, the Lord said to Joshua, Tell the twelve men chosen for a special task, one from each tribe, each to take a stone from where the priests are standing in the middle of the Jordan, and to carry them out and pile them up as a monument at the place where you camp tonight. So Joshua summoned the twelve men and told them, Go out into the middle of the Jordan where the ark is, each of you is to carry out a stone on your shoulder, twelve stones in all, one for each of the twelve tribes. We will use them to build a monument so that in the future, when your children ask, what is this monument for, you can tell them it is to remind us that the Jordan River stopped flowing when the Ark of God went across. The monument will be a permanent reminder to the people of Israel of this amazing miracle. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to go ahead and read this a little bit of commentary that I have that I pulled up on this phone. And it says here, When all the people had completely crossed over the Jordan, Israel was now on the other side of the Jordan, in the Promised Land. But what is life in the Promised Land like? Is it one glorious vacation time after another? No. For Israel, it was a place of battle. But most of all, it was a place of trust. They knew they had to trust God with everything they had, because the challenges only got bigger in the Promised Land, but so did the blessings. Most of us would have wanted to rush on through and take care of Jericho. Why not take advantage of of the time when they were all afraid of you. But God is never in a hurry. And he knows that beyond us doing something, we must be something for him. So he takes out so he takes time out to conquer Israel spiritually before they can conquer Jericho under his guidance. In this in the text it talked about taking up twelve stones out of the midst of the Jordan. From the place where the priest's feet stood firm. Each tribe was to send their representative to take a stone, undoubtedly a large one, from the dry riverbed where Israel had crossed over, so these stones could be set up as a memorial. That this may be a sign among you when your children ask in time to come. The purpose of this memorial was so that the people of Israel could teach their children about the great things God had done, so that the work of God would not be forgotten among the generations. We often fail in our trust of God because we forget the great things He has done, and often the faith of our children is weak because they have never been told how great 
God is and how real his working is in our lives. You know, that kind of reminds me of uh, even reading bedtime stories. You know, why not read a Bible story? Why not read a story of how great God is? You know, the Bible has great stories for kids. The Bible has great lessons for children to learn from. You know, and I just recently uh, read little Joshua. Um, David and Goliath. Um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, Jonah and the whale. And uh, the the prodigal son, you know, and, and I'm learning that as I embrace him, not only as my son, but if I embrace him as a member of the body of Christ, you know, it helps me to to know that I'm this isn't going to be in vain. You know, it helps me to build up character in this young man. You know, and uh, it's just we need to have a memorial in our in our lives, in our homes, and teach these children who this mighty God is, what this mighty God is really about. It says, what are these stones? There was obviously a purpose in the memorial stones for the people of Israel themselves. It is so easy for us to forget the great miracles God has performed on our behalf. We don't remember the past great works of God so that we can live in a dreamland of the past, thinking that the best days of our Christian experiences are behind us. We will remember them as a point of faith so that we can trust God for greater and greater works in the future, because we have seen and experienced His past faithfulness. Amen to that. You know, uh, remember what God has done for you, and don't forget that He will move mountains so that you can have a better life. You know, these, uh, these chapters are important for us, because they help build us up. And I hope you guys have a blessed day. I'm not going to keep it too long. I have to drink my coffee. And get ready for another day at work. So God bless. I'll see you guys tomorrow.